So in today's video, we're going to go over how you can launch your own Crew AI application. If you're a beginner programmer, or even if you have no technical experience at all, this tutorial is going to be just for you because I'm going to walk you through all the tools that you need in order to do this. I'm going to walk you through setting up your Crew AI project template that I'm going to provide the code for you. And then I'm also going to show you how you can deploy this online. That way your Crew AI project will be hosted online and you'll be able to share this application with others. So if you're someone that's been interested in learning about AI technologies, but don't really know where to start at the end of this project not only will you be able to have your own crew ai application launched but you will also have been exposed to multiple software technologies and by the end of this tutorial you will have gained a lot more experience just by doing rather than by going back to school or taking a course online which again a lot of those things are based on theory not necessarily application so again for the first part the first thing we're going to go over is the tools you need to install in your computer in order to run this project after that i'm going to walk you through how you can run and install a sample project for a crew and within this project you can have multiple options for the llms including paid and free options and last i'm going to show you how you can deploy your application online to share with others for free so let's go ahead and get started now the first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to install visual studio code and like i mentioned i'm starting completely from scratch on this tutorial i'm going to assume that you have nothing installed in your machine so let's download the one for mac once that finishes downloading we're simply going to run it and just like that it's up and running on your computer visual studio code is going to be what we use to edit our code and to run some other commands in our terminal and again all your terminal is is the interface that you use to type or send commands to your computer and the way you can open that in visual studio code is right here at the top you go to terminal and then open new terminal now in order to run the commands that we need in order to run our projects we do need to install them in our computer beforehand in order for them to work and just so you have some clarity on how you can test if these were installed properly or not we're going to try to run them right now and of course they're going to fail because again we haven't installed anything in this computer just yet so one of the nice things of working with a mac is that you can download a lot of the packages or libraries or basically you can download a lot of the software that your computer needs for development purposes by simply typing in a command and installing it on your computer one of the ways that you can do this is you can first install what's called a package manager called homebrew in order to get this all you have to do is google mac brew and you'll be taken to this brew.sh website and here you get a really easy to tutorial on how, you, on how you can install this so really you just need to copy this command right here you're going to go back to your terminal you're going to press enter from here it's going to ask you your user password so just type that up and press enter again and just press enter through the installation process once you finish installing you do get this prompt to follow these next steps in order to make sure that your brew commands work properly so let's copy this first one here and paste it and then the second one as well Just to double check, type in brew dash dash version. As we move forward in this tutorial, you're going to see that there are going to be times where we install something and when we check the version with our terminal, it's not going to work. Typically, what you have to do is usually just close your terminal and start a new session by going to terminal and then new terminal. And usually that tends to fix it. So now that we've downloaded and installed Brew on our MacBook, we're gonna be able to very easily install other software or other tools into our computer without having to go in the website, install them, download them, this and that. It'll just make it a lot easier. I'm gonna tell you a little bit about the other tools that we're gonna install and why we need them for this project, just so that you start getting a little more visibility and exposure why these are tools that are commonly used by software developers or people that work on projects like these. The first tool we're gonna to download is called Git. As I mentioned earlier, Git is what's used in order to download coding projects that are open source. So even if you don't have too much experience with technology, I'm sure at some point you've ended up at this website called GitHub, or maybe you're looking for a project or a program to do something, but then you ended up in this page and had all these files and all, you know, maybe, a, maybe they were Python, maybe they were Java, and you just didn't really know what to do with that from there. Maybe you tried downloading them, maybe you tried copying and pasting them. So what Git does is basically, again, in your command line, it allows you to pull that code that's available, that's open source, so you can run these programs and work on them or make your own versions on them on your own. The next one we're gonna download is called pipx. So pipx is a tool used for Python. And if you've heard of Python, I'm sure you've heard about how easy it is to use, how many tools there are for it, and how many things you can do with Python. Tools like pipx allow for your Python projects to basically install, run, 
tools that other people have developed. These are what are commonly called as libraries or packages. And because CreAI is pretty much a Python program, or rather a framework written in Python, Pipex is what's going to allow us to use some of the dependencies needed for this project. And the last one we're going to use is called Poetry. And the way I can think of explaining it is, think about when you download an application to your phone or to your computer. Usually in that downloading process, you're downloading a lot of files that that application needs in order to run properly. Of course, with application products, that's all done, you know, without you noticing. But when it comes to projects or software that's being developed, usually the process might not be as straightforward. So if I'm making my own Python project, I'm probably using multiple libraries or multiple Python tools. And if I want to share that project with you, well, one way that I can get you to run it the same way that I'm running it is by giving you the list of all the tools that I used in order to get it to work. And of course, technically, you could go ahead, install the project and run all those tools, do all those installations one by one before you even get your project to start running. But with tools like Poetry, I'm pretty much able to just give you the list. And once you run the command that I'm going to show you, you'll be able to download all of the libraries, all of the dependencies needed to get that project to work for you the same way that it's working for me. So I just want to give you that brief explanation. I know it can seem a little bit like a headache that we're installing all these things to install these other things. But believe me, these tools are really meant to save you a lot of time and a lot of complexity as you develop these projects and as you collaborate with others. So let's go ahead and install Git first. Here we go to the Git website, download from Mac, and you can see here, the command is pretty much just brew install git. So let's go to our terminal and do that. Brew install git. All right, so we finished installing that. So let's check and make sure that it's verified through our command line. So we're gonna do git dash dash version. And we can see here that it was installed properly. So let's go ahead and move on to the next one. The next thing we're gonna do is install pipx. And we can see it's also available from the homebrew website. We just have to do brew install pipx. So let's copy that, go to our terminal. Again, once it finishes downloading, we want to verify that it was installed properly. So we just want to do pipx dash dash version. And here we see the version number. So that tells us that it was installed properly. And last we're going to do Python poetry. And we're just going to use this command pipx install poetry. And one thing I forgot to mention was when you install Pipex, we want to make sure that that's available for other projects. So let's go ahead and do Pipex ensure path. And from then you'll be good to go when you want to use it later on for other projects. And let's go ahead and check our version for poetry. And that's just going to be poetry dash dash version. So this is that error that I was telling you that we're getting. We get this error that says command not found poetry. So, you know, before we panic, before we get frustrated, let's just go ahead and close our terminals and start a new session. Terminal, new terminal, again, poetry dash dash version. And see, just like that, we're able to see the version that was installed. And again, that just tells us that the installation went through as planned. So that wraps up this part of the tutorial series. And again, I'm making these tutorials with the assumption that you have little to no coding experience. I know for me personally, I went to learn about coding and programming since a very young age, but when I was a little bit younger, I felt that the tutorials that were online were either too complex or too long or too complicated to the point that there was a lot of times where I felt like maybe all these people that were doing the coding programming were just so much smarter than me. And, you know, there was a lot of times where I pretty much talked myself out of learning because of that feeling of being overwhelmed. Now more than ever, because of how fast AI is moving, I believe it's super important for people to get comfortable with learning new technologies and also applying them so that they can keep up with all these changes, whether it's just because they want to make their own personal projects or they want to learn how to apply AI to their business. So because of that, I'd rather make a video where I pretty much hold your hand through every step of the way so that you actually apply the steps and get something out of it rather than trying to make myself sound like an expert by using overly complex or technical terminology. I really want to thank you guys for all the positive feedback you've been giving me. Those thank yous that you post in the comments or in the Discord definitely go a long way. So I really appreciate that sincerity from all of you. I'm still offering free one-on-one -on -one video calls. So if there's some feedback you need on your project or on how you're trying to apply AI to your business. The link is going to be in the description so you can book a call with me. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.